Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And we're talking about the Dungeons and Dragons starter set for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And this is a Lost Mine of Fandelva Dungeon Master Guide. I've been doing quite a few of these. There's a whole raft of them now. So if you're wanting more information on preparing the Lost Mine of Fandelva or other characters within the adventure, you probably find I have done a video on them now. Okay, so we're going to talk about Agatha. Agatha the Undead Banshee. One of the characters where essentially there's not going to be a single bit of combat. And it's, it's actually stated in the adventure, in the text, that you're not supposed to have uh, the party, the characters, fight Agatha. Agatha doesn't operate that way. In fact, Agatha very rarely appears to anybody. But we'll go into that in more detail in a second. So you can check pages 28 and 29 of the adventure, Lost Mine of Fandelva, and it gives you a pretty good rundown of Agatha and how she will operate in her little lair or location of uh, Coneyberry. Now, where is Coneyberry? Now, the map that's provided in the adventure actually shows you exactly where it is. You'll notice it's down the bottom and about the middle of the map on the screen right now. It's very close to where Old Al Well is, where Hum and Cost uh, is situated. And I've done a video on that particular character already. Now, where does she actually live? Well, she lives in a, a rather odd lair. Uh, this lair is near the ruins of the town of Coneberry, or Coneyberry, uh, which is essentially been wiped out. It's, uh, it's long gone, it's just ruins now. It's a few miles uh, along an old trail leading to the northwest into the Neverwinter Woods. So that's where her lair is located. And her lair consists of a woven dome of branches with elven furniture that has a very old style and look to it. So it's been around a long time and of course, I mean, there's a whole bunch of information in the, uh, in the text describing what it sort of will look like and how you sort of uh, approach it for the characters. Now, Agatha was once a, a beautiful female elf that is now a spectral robed spirit with a hateful expression and twisted facial features. I've kind of gone a bit overboard with this particular image, but you get the idea, right? Uh, she will not tolerate rude, disrespectful, or threatening visitors. In fact, if they do that sort of thing, she's not going to get into a fight. She's just going to disappear, and that's it, and there's nothing more you can do with that particular encounter. Agatha appears when the party intrudes on her home, but she doesn't normally appear to all visitors. And I know it's going to be tempting for um, the player's characters to return and see Agatha if they had a good experience the first time. But I'm going to talk about that more as we go through the video because it's not really, a, it's not really going to be an option. Um, the adventure is set up to allow them one question with Agatha provided they meet all the requirements that she has. So she does not get into a battle, and she will disappear if dis disrespected or threatened in any way. But what you can do, is if the party decides to do this, that is, and it's not necessarily going to be the case, but they can try to persuade um, Agatha to help them, provided that uh, they do something for her. Now, if they they try to, do, to sorry, if they try to persuade Agatha by intimidation or being deceptive. Now she's very smart, she's been around a long time, the chances are being deceptive with her won't go down well and certainly intimidation will just result in her fading away. But Agatha does love pretty items and if you present a pretty or beautiful gift or there is a person who is pretty or beautiful within the party who is willing to uh, get into an exchange or conversation with her, she will certainly tolerate your presence. A gift is probably going to be uh, most suitable and some sort of persuasion check. Although I feel that if you give her a gift and you're nice enough that uh, using the, the persuasion check is 
probably not hugely necessary. I often feel that the mechanical side of uh, persuasion, deception and intimidation are really there for those people who struggle with the concept of role playing. Uh, but that's just my view. She's definitely fixated on beauty, so appealing to that will certainly help a lot. Now part of the adventure, there's an, a hook into Agatha, and that is Sister Galia's Silver Comb. She can be found in Phandalin, and she can present to the player's characters a comb to negotiate with Agatha. Provided that they are nice enough to Agatha, present the comb, she will act favourably, and there's no persuasion check required whatsoever. And I think that's actually a good aspect to the, the adventure, simply because they have eliminated the need to do that sort of thing where you're rolling dice, provided you have met the things that she that motivates her and that she's interested in. So even if you don't have the, the silver comb and you present something else that's of value and it's attractive or beautiful, I think you should allow your player's characters to have um, a freebie and essentially no dice roll required and just let them interact with Agatha and get their, their free question. Agatha can answer many questions, as we've just been talking about, but she will only answer one question. So that means that the player's characters need to be very careful about what they select as their question, because they're only going to get one shot at this. Agatha does not always appear to a party if they return. So if they return and decide, well, Agatha's a great source of information, we will return and ask her multiple questions at a later date, I wouldn't let that fly. I would say she just doesn't appear. You only get one shot at this and that is that. So what does Agatha the Banshee know that she can answer for the party should they desire that? Well, there's a number of different things within the adventure and they'll have to be very discerning about what they select. Otherwise, they're not going to get a chance. As I said, they only get one chance at this. The first one is that Agatha knows what happened to the spell book that she used to have that was owned by Bow Gentle. The Bow Gentle's uh, spell book, uh, she gave that to a, a necromancer by the name of Tersnath from the city of Erebor more than like a hundred years ago. So if you're looking for information on that particular aspect, she can certainly um, pass that on. So that's just one aspect of it. What the party doesn't know is she has access to many spell books, and not just um, Bow Gentle's spell book. But you don't need to reveal that at all. Uh, certainly that's something that you can sort of allow it to play out and see where they go with that. She also knows the location of Cragmore Castle if they're still in the process of trying to figure out where Cragmore Castle is. That doesn't mean that she can provide them with a detailed map of a location. That's really up to you as a dungeon master if she were to do something like that. Maybe she does have a detailed uh, map of the location. She's been around a long time, so it's certainly possible, but you don't need to provide them with one. Um, just the, the basic location of where the castle is. Another location she knows about, and that is the location of Wave Echo Cave, and probably the Spell Forge, should they be searching for that. You don't, as I said, need to provide them with a detailed map on the location, just the general location where they can find uh, that, uh, that cave. She also knows the identity of the Black Spider. So she can give you a little bit of information on the Black Spider and how that works. Now I've done a video on Nesnar the Black Spider and you're welcome to use that information uh, with your players as they ask questions and try to find out a little bit more about Nesnar the Black Spider. She might not necessarily know all of the reasons why the Black Spider is doing what he's doing, but it should be pretty obvious it's power and control. Ultimately that's what it's usually all about and you can relay that to your players should they ask about Nesna the Black Spider. Next one is connected to uh, Hum and Cost, and that is Old Owl Well. Uh, so Agatha can tell the party who built the watchtower, and it's built by Athondol, a uh, Sarok lord. I think that's um, spell, spell how you say it, Sarok 
Sarok. I believe it's Sarok Lord who uh, eventually transformed uh, into a lich. And so I've done a video on a little bit of that information. You're welcome to share that with the players if they start asking about that sort of thing. This is connected to what Haman Kost wants. He wants to know who built the watchtower at Old Al Well, so Agatha can relay that information as well. And in fact, Agatha can pretty much answer just about every single question the players might have about uh, anything in the adventure, should you desire. Uh, but be careful because although she can answer pretty much any question they might desire, I would make sure you put limits on what they can get away with asking. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up running into a situation where they will rely on her. As I said, uh, repeated returns or visits to Agatha's lair shouldn't result in them being able to ask yet more questions. Although that is an option if you desire to do so. It's your game, it's up to you. Okay, so Agatha is a capable diviner, so put limits on the answers that she can give, particularly when it's related to future events. Remember, she's a capable diviner, that means she can foretell the future. So if they start to fear and, and realise that there's a possibility of asking about a future event, just be careful about whether she'll answer that question. You may, might say, look, no, Agatha won't answer that question, but she'll answer a different question, particularly if they're trying to figure out what's going to happen to their characters in the future, which is going to be really awkward because as a dungeon master, you don't really know if that's definitely going to happen anyway, so that makes it really, really complicated. She's antisocial, she's selfish, uh, she's a vain phantom who cares for really no one else. There was a time when she did care for somebody else, but that is long gone now. But she doesn't care for anybody else but herself. Herself. <laughs> herself? Herself. Yes, for herself. Agatha viewed the townsfolk of Coneyberry as an ally until they were wiped out by barbarians. Now, these barbarians were actually werewolves. It's like a tribe of werewolves or barbaric werewolves, and they viewed the people of Coneyberry as a threat and took them out a long time ago. Uh, Agatha used to protect Coneyberry. Uh, I don't think that the people of Coneyberry saw her as an ally because when she said that she wanted something done, I imagine they saw that as I don't have a choice, otherwise she's going to do something horrible to me. But um, that was really the only connection she had left to the, the world that isn't the spectral world, to the material world. And when they all uh, were destroyed, that's really left her with nothing else other than um, herself. And, and that's kind of sad, I have to say. I think that's kind of, it shows an aspect to the character that, that sort of suggests that there's a little bit of pity to be given for Agatha. Agatha has several hidden spell books, which I've already sort of talked about, uh, littered around her lair for trading with visitors, but she can't actually use these spell books at all herself. So that's why she uses them as a way of trading and, and generally sort of uh, getting what she wants from somebody else. So I would certainly utilize those as a way of, um, if, they don't, if the players don't want something like a question asked, maybe trading one a beautiful item for a spell book to uh, a member in the group who has the ability to use spell books might be quite useful and might be more what the party is after. It really depends on them. Agatha's name is rumoured to be a corrupt version of the name Agalutha. Agalutha, yes, I believe it is. A U G L A T H L A. And this means winter breeze in Old Elven. Agatha still retains many of her wizardry skills that she had in life. They are just limited by her spectral existence now. One of the things that Agatha absolutely despises and hates, uh, and it's not really highlighted in a lot of detail in the adventure, but it's, it's quite, quite normal for any kind of elf, really, and that is orcs. Orcs in particular. She dislikes orcs and orc raiders uh, like most elves do. And she spent quite a lot of time when Coneyberry, the people of Coneyberry, were still alive and the township was flourishing, protecting them from raiding orcs. 
That sounds strange, because isn't this a banshee, and aren't banshees supposed to be completely evil? Well, I'm not going to say that Agatha isn't completely evil, because she certainly is, but she's cursed for doing a certain uh, thing in her life, and that's sort of part of the story. She's been cursed for ba and to become a banshee when she betrayed her family by giving up the secrets of the woods to her human lover. Now, the fact that she selected a human lover was frowned upon to begin with, but the fact that she betrayed her family secrets about the woods and the forest to this human was uh, unforgivable. And what's worse is it's turned into a, a big mess for her. Her human lover is called uh, Dargind. Dargind, I believe it is. D-A-R-G-I-N-D. Dargind. Now, Dargind's lover murdered her family, wiped them out, and eventually once he had done what he wanted and got everything he could get out of Agatha, he eventually disposed of Agatha as well. Doesn't it sound kind of sad? It certainly sounds sad to me. Agatha, for that very reason, distrusts humans due to her history. So she's likely to be more, she's more likely to be able to communicate and be cooperative uh, with party members who are not human. So if they were Alvin or some other race, she's more likely to interact with them for that very reason, simply because of her history. Agatha, as I've said, is susceptible to flattery and gifts and anything that appeals to her vanity. So um, comments that uh, lift her up and comment on her beautiful appearance, even though she is not that beautiful anymore, she's kind of twisted, uh, there is an aspect to any kind of banshee that sort of suggests that they are beautiful, but it's the hatred that's burning within them uh, from their curse and their cursed existence that makes them so um, despised and awful to, 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 uh, to behold, which is why they have the kind of uh, abilities and features, the whale in particular. So make sure you play that up given the opportunity. Agatha is bonded to Coney Berry for all time. She can't go anywhere whatsoever. It's, it's a, a place where, one, she, she can't rest, she can't leave, she really can't do anything much. And that's kind of sad in many respects. Now there was also a, an item that Agatha possessed many, many years ago. And it's, it's, I, would, I call it Agatha's Mask. It's basically, it's a magical item that bestows upon the wearer the illusion of appearing as a different race. And this was stolen from her. It's a very prized possession, which she no longer has. It was actually stolen by Dritz and Wolfgar. For those of you who know anything about the uh, Dritz Doran uh, stories, uh, those particular individuals were asked not to uh, kill Agatha. This is from the Coneberry uh, village when they were still alive. Uh, asked not to kill Agatha or destroy Agatha, but they wanted the mask and so they took the mask from Agatha without hurting her uh, significantly in any way that would mean that she would be banished indefinitely uh, for all time. So it's kind of strange how all of this has played out. I think um, Agatha is one of the more interesting characters within the Lost Mine of Fandalva, and it's hard not to feel a lot of pity for her. She, she really wants that mask back. Uh, if, if there's anything that will draw Agatha out, it's, the, it's being able to produce that mask. But nobody really knows where it is. It's not like it would be easy for the party to actually track that down and bring it back to Agatha if they wanted to, even if they had the desire to do so. But she, she really wants that particular mask back, and I thought I would let you know about that, since I thought it was quite interesting myself. She is, don't forget it, Agatha is a banshee, and yes, she is very evil, but it's, as I said, it's very hard not to feel a bit of pity for this character, considering the sorts of things that, that have taken place. Now, she is the kind of um, elf who has brought this on herself. Uh, it's her vanity and her uh, pride in herself and her love of herself that has caused her to come to these, this ruined end. And, it, and it's an end that will never stop. 
So it is very, very sad. I think it's a very sad story. Now when it comes to the monster stat block, if you are tempted to go track down the Banshee stat block in the monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, by all means you are the dungeon master, it's up to you. But I would like to point out that something like the Banshee is capable of decimating an entire party with just um, one ability. And the whale is, is going to do it. Uh, I, I don't think it's a really good idea. I think you should steer away from... This is why the adventure talks about she disappears if there's going to be any kind of fighting or combat. And I would just leave it at that. I think that's the best way to approach that. Now, if you found this video helpful or informative, because that's really all I have for today, please share and like the video. If you like the sort of thing, I usually do uh, more content on the Lost Mine of Fandelva. I do Dungeon Master Guides. So consider subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live. If you want to support my channel, you supported my channel by watching this video, and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I don't do Patreon, but I have hundreds of videos you can go and check out, and that will continue to support me. I also have affiliate links down in the description where you can buy stuff from the Book Depository and Amazon. I get a small commission. Uh, you pay exactly the same price as you normally would. Just go through the link, buy what you want. You do not have to buy the thing I've linked to. Now, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Say hi to me. Um, give me your feedback. Did you run the encounter slightly differently to what is in the book? Uh, would you like to add something that I have missed? There's actually quite a lot of information scattered across the internet about Agatha, and some of it uh, is contradictory. So it's a very, it's very, you've got to be careful about what you pick up. Some of it might in fact be contradictory in this video. And um, if I do get something wrong, I do apologize. I did spend lots of time trying to make sure I got everything correct. And if I haven't got it correct, I have hopefully provided you with a bit more meat for that character when you decide to run it in your game. Uh, provided the player's characters actually don't just run away. So give me your feedback in the live chat. If you're not part of the live chat, that's what the comment section's for. That's where you give your feedback. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.